Good day, I'm Elisna from the Vistas and from the Accounting Standards Board and today I'll be discussing with you graph 18 on segment reporting. Um, the reason for the recording is that it's a newly effective standard so please feel free to use this recording when you need to implement the standard. So just an overview on what I'll be discussing with you today about the standard is firstly what is a segment and then we'll also look at the accounting problem that Graph 18 aims to solve and the key principles from Graph 18. We'll also look at the arrangements for first time adoption and then the potential implications of applying the standard. So firstly, what is a segment? A segment is an activity that generates economic benefits or service potential and that includes um, activities that are transactions between an entity then the activities results must also be regularly reviewed by management and for the purposes of making decisions about allocating resources to the segment as well as the performance of the segment. And lastly, separate financial information must be available for the activity. So all three of those things must be met for it to be a segment. It's important to note that not every part of an entity's operations may be um, in the definition of a segment. So it could be that some parts of an entity's operation that does not meet the definition. Um, and it's also important to note that only if an entity has segments that meet the definition in the standard is a segment report prepared. Otherwise, if there are no segments that, or activities that meet the definition of a segment, there's no need to apply the standard and no segment report is required. So if we look at an example, a public entity X identifies that it has three different units in its um, entity. So the first one is the sale of goods, um, then the delivery of services and lastly an administrative unit. So assessing each of these units against the definition of a segment, um, on slide 7 we have assessed them for purposes of this example. And the sale of goods and delivery of services, they do meet all three the parts of the definition. So they do generate economic benefits or service potential. Um, they are being reviewed by management on a regular basis and separate financial information uh, is available for both of them. On the administration unit, the definition is not met because it does not generate future economic benefits or service potential and it's also not regularly reviewed by management even though financial information is available. So in this example, the sale of goods and delivery of services meet the definition of segments whereas the administrative unit does not and therefore the administrative unit is not included in the segment report. So if we look at definitions further, what if an entity has more than one set of activities? For example, it has different lines of goods and services as well as various different geographical locations um, in which the goods and the services are provided. Then an entity needs to consider a number of factors to determine if a single set of uh, criteria is applicable. So firstly, the entity will look at the nature of the activities, the existence of managers that are responsible for the activities, and then whether other information is also presented to management. If it still concludes that it has more than one activity, then an entity may report on both of these, and it could be reported separately as separate segments or um, in a matrix format, it's, it's also another way of presenting it. The entity may also choose to adopt a primary and a secondary segment report. So um, the requirement is that the, the primary report would need to meet all the disclosure requirements. For the secondary report, it may not be necessary to provide all the information. So we have an example too on slide 9 that just illustrates how an entity may present um, a segment report as a matrix where it has more than one set of activities. So in this example the entity has different lines of goods and services um, as one set of activities as well as geographical locations as another set of activities. 
Then the accounting problem that Graph 18 tries to solve is that information in the financial statements is aggregated and may not provide information necessary for the users about the entity's specific operational objectives, the major activities that it has, as well as the resources devoted and the costs of those objectives and activities. So for that reason it is necessary to report this aggregated financial and non-financial information so that users can hold entities accountable and make decisions. Looking at the key principles from Graph 18, there are basically four areas that we'll touch on today. The first one is how to report segments and in short it's reported each segment separately or some of the segments could be aggregated together then what information should be disclosed. So there are basically three types of information to be disclosed. The first one being general information. Then secondly information on the surplus or deficit of the segment. Assets and liabilities of the segment could also be uh, reported in some instances. And lastly reconciliations and that would be reconciliations between the segment reports information and the financial statement information. Then how should the information be measured? In short it will be the measure that's used when information is presented to management. So that is how it will be presented in the segment report. Then what are entity-wide disclosures? Um, this is specific disclosures required by the standard and it relates to geographical information. So if we firstly look at reporting on segments, so the key principle is that each segment that meets the definition of a segment must be reported separately. Um, otherwise there could be different segments that are aggregated together and there are basically two scenarios when segments can be aggregated. The first one is when the segments have similar economic characteristics as well as they share a majority of the following things which would include the nature of the goods and the services, the types um, or the class of the customer and the, con um, the consumer. Then also the methods used to distribute the various goods and services and then lastly the regulatory environment if that is applicable. Then the second scenario when information can be aggregated different segments together is when the segments are individually insignificant or otherwise if a practical limit has been reached of the number of segments that are reported. So the practical limit is the point beyond which information becomes too detailed to be of use. Although no precise limit has been set, the standard does refer to 10 segments being more or less the limit beyond which an entity needs to consider if the information is still useful. Then on the disclosure of the segment information, the key principle is that information must be presented that will enable the users to evaluate the nature as well as the financial effects of its activities and the economic environment that it operates in. So the three types of information that we've spoken about is the general information. Firstly, and that would include, for example, factors that's used to identify segments. So the factors used to identify segments could be the lines of goods or services or the geographical location, the regulatory environments, or maybe even a combination of them. Then what's also necessary in the general information category is the aggregation of segments as well as the basis that's been used and the types of goods and services. Then the second type of information presented relates to the segment specific surplus or deficit as well as assets, liabilities and the basis of the measurement. So firstly a measure of surplus or deficit is required for each segment that is presented. A measure of assets and liabilities for the segment is presented only if it's also reported to management. 
Then lastly, information is required on the specific items included in a segment surplus or deficit and that is the surplus or deficit reported to management. Um, these specific items are also required to be presented if they are not included in surplus or deficit presented to management but reported in other means to management or outside of surplus or deficit to management. Um, other information is also required for assets where they are presented to management. So just a few examples of what these um, specific items are that are required to be presented would be external revenue from exchange as well as from non-exchange transactions as well as internal revenue among activities of the entity. Um, interest received as well as interest paid although they are not um, reported on a net basis but they are reported separately. Information on depreciation and amortization uh, is another example. Then on measurement, so the key principle on measuring information in the segment report is it must be the measure reported to management to make decisions about allocating resources to the segment and about the entity or the segment's performance. Um, the surplus or deficit that's reported in the segment report will only include adjustments that's being made or eliminations in the financial statement if that was also reported to management. It's the same um, for the assets and liabilities presented. Then when information is among different segments allocated, the basis on which the allocation is done must be a reasonable basis. It's possible that management uses more than one measure to receive information that it uses to assess the performance and make decisions about the segment. If only one measure is used, then that is the measure that's being reported on in the segment report. But if more than one measure is used, then management is required to make an assessment about which measure is more closely aligned to what the requirements are in the standards of GRAP. Um, in other words, how the information is reported in the financial statement. And that will then be the measure that is used for the segment report. Management is also required to provide an explanation of the measurement of the segment surplus or deficit. So this will include the basis that has been used, um, whether there were any changes from the previous year, the nature of asymmetrical allocations where allocation is made between segments but not on an equal proportionate basis. So an example that we've included on slide 17 is where management of public entity Z measures the surplus and deficit both on the cash as well as on the accrual basis. So management assesses that the measurement principles of the accrual basis are most consistent with what is being used to measure the corresponding amounts in the entity's financial statements. So for that reason the accrual measure of surplus and deficit is what is used in the segment report. Another example on measurement is where public entity Y has three segments that share a leased asset in their production processes. Um, the hours that each of the segments use the asset is fixed for the duration of the lease term and that's determined as segment 1 using the asset for 50 hours, segment 2 for 100 hours and segment 3 for 20 hours a month. So management determines that allocating the least ex the lease expense among the three segments based on the hours that each of them use the asset is most appropriate. That better reflects how the costs are being incurred by each of the segments than allocating the costs equally among the three segments. Then on restatements, when an entity changes its structure of internal organization so that the segments change, the information on their corresponding years need to be restated. If it's available, um, then it needs to be restated or if it can be determined without, determin or without incurring excessive costs, it needs to be restated. But if it's not available or excessive costs would need to be incurred, 
then the information is not restated but the requirement is then for the current year information to be presented both on the old and on the new basis again if available and or um, determinable without excessive costs if it is going to um, be excessively expensive to determine the information for the current year then it does not need to be presented both on the old and the new basis but that fact must be disclosed. Then lastly on entity-wide disclosures, last of the key principles is that this applies to all entities but if the information is already provided as part of a segment report or somewhere else in the financial report it does not need to be presented again. So the requirement is for the geographical information to be disclosed. And the disclosure is for the different areas that the entity operates in um, and it's relevant for decision making. And this would include foreign operations or foreign countries. The information that is to be reported on the geographical areas would include the external revenues from exchange and non-exchange uh, transactions as well as total expenses and information on non-current assets per geographical location. The amounts would be based on what is included in the financial statements. So again, this disclosure is when the information is available or it can be determined without incurring undue costs or excessive costs. If um, it's not available or will be excessively expensive, then that fact should be disclosed. The arrangements for first-time adoption is that all provisions of GRAP 18 must be applied on or after the effective date except if some of the items um, are not measured in accordance with standards of GRAP because of transitional provisions uh, for that specific standard of GRAP. Then comparative information is not required for segment reports. On the effective date, the standard is effective on 1 April 2019 for trading entities, parliament and provincial legislatures. It's effective on 1 April 2020 for municipalities and municipal entities. Then the last thing we're going to look at is the potential implications of GRAP 18. So this uh, GRAP 18 replaces the version of the standard that was issued in 2005 and it's based on IFRS 8 operating segments. The board decided to base it on IFRS 8 because it is simplified from the previous uh, standard of GRAP. It eliminated requirements to separate the primary and the secondary information um, of segments and it also simplified the measurement requirements. What is new is that it introduced disclosure on the ge geographical areas, which is the entity-wide disclosures. And that is the presentation on segment reporting.